Broadway in New York City has long been the stage for some of the best plays and musicals ever written. But back in 1908, it became home to one of the largest scandals in American history, thanks to San Francisco woman named Maud Allen. She was an actress who made her fame thanks to her leading role in Oscar Wilde's stage play, Salome. Her performance made international headlines because she played the character as erotic and scandally clad. Now remember, Oscar Wilde was a very famous gay writer who just passed away eight years prior to this in 1900. So playing the role in his stage play as a gay woman wasn't out of the ordinary but Maud Allen took it a step further. That's why media companies around the world condemned her performance, calling for her to be taken off the stage by the producers. Men around the world called for the censoring of the dancing on stage, and women around the world loved the image of freedom it presented. Ten years later in 1918, Maud Allen sued a British conservative politician named Noel Pemberton Billing for libel. Just recently, Noel published an article called, quote, The Cult of the Clitoris, which claimed an army of lesbian spies were hurting England's war effort. He also suggested in the article that somehow American Maud Allen's performance in a New York City play was connected to the, quote, systematic seduction of British soldiers by the German Erdings. Actress Allen sued Billing for the horrible lies he was presenting in this defamatory article. During the trial, Billing doubled down on his lies and even said under oath that Allen was a, quote, pervert. He even said she was sexually involved with Margaret Asquith, who was the wife of the former prime minister. And even though there is some truth to that second part, when the case ended, the court ruled in favor of Billing, claiming he was telling the truth of Allen being a German spy living in America her whole life and seducing British soldiers with her homosexual dancing on a stage in New York City. And somehow the press around the world agreed with this and somehow convinced the public of the same. The lasting effects of this court case were seen starting immediately worldwide. Homophobes who were jumping at the chance to be hateful created an organization called the New York Society for the Suppression of Vice. Their organization lobbied lawmakers hard to clean up the Broadway stage, which in turn would clean up smaller stages worldwide. Their one and only goal was to keep homosexual characters and storylines off of the stage. Sadly, their main argument as to why the stage needed these laws to prohibit homosexual characters was that old article by Billing, stating that Allen was a German spy working in America. The New York Society for the Suppression of Vice worked closely with district attorneys across the country, but particularly in New York City. They had police raid theaters and serve arrest warrants to actors, directors, and producers on pretty much anything they deemed as not worthy of being on stage. Basically, if you put a gay character or storyline in your musical or play, or even if they thought you did, your entire cast and crew could not only be shut down, but arrested. Not even two months later, the New York Republican-controlled State Assembly passed a law to prevent perverted actions on stages, including homosexual storylines. They also passed what's called the Wales Padlock Law, which somehow allowed police to close a theater for a year or more if the owners were convicted of presenting a play that violated obscenity laws. This law made theater owners fear putting any play on their stages because they might be shut down. It forced them to implement very harsh rules on what producers of shows could do on their stages. The Wales Padlock Law remained in effect until 1967. While the New York Society for the Suppression of Vice changed its name officially in 1947 to the Society to Maintain Public Decency, their targeting of homosexual themes on stages stayed the same. And although three years later, in 1950, they dissolved completely, the lasting effects they had on the stage continued to this day, 
with directors and producers sometimes hesitant of putting homosexual themes on their stages. If you want to learn more LGBTQ history lessons, be sure to check out this playlist right here. And if you want to learn more about LGBTQ topics, then hit that rainbow subscribe button for weekly episodes. I am Professor Pride. Have a gay day, everyone, and bye for now.